now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 606, it's O'Connor and Company, and we are all fired up and, frankly, a little wired. And we can't wait until everything starts to sort of fall into place this yes. week, Julie Gunlock. A little over-caffeinated With this tomorrow's morning. election. And, oh, we're not sleeping no. all week. We are not <laughs> sleeping, and we're ready for it. Coming up in 30 minutes, our own Patrice Anwuka to talk about the black female vote, which we're told is going to be a difference maker. In fact, I'm looking forward to her uh, analysis of what we're about to discuss. Annette Cutchings, an African-American conservative woman, a Republican woman in Alexandria in a fierce encounter with a, uh, well, not African-American, not conservative, not a cordial woman no. in Alexandria. Also, 705 Joe Genova, 735 Trevor Maddich, 805 Sean Spicer. And then at 835, we'll speak with the aforementioned Annette Catchings, who is the star of this video, Julie Gunlock. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, how can I set this up properly? This is a scene from what could be any bougie coffee shop in Alexandria or Montgomery County or Washington, D.C., or fill in the blanks of sort of the upper, upper class sort of establishments yes. where you spend way too much money for coffee that doesn't even taste as good as your Mr. Coffee at home, let's face it. <laughs> let's not go that far. In fact, it looks like a lot of these women were drinking matcha. <laughs> yes. Matcha tells you everything you need to know. And obviously, I, I, again, we're talking about this not just because this video went so viral over the weekend and was so highly viewed, but also because I think it's a microcosm of sort of the political conversation going on in this country, especially among women. Uh, yeah. That's where, Julie, I hope you can sort of attest to. Yes. Well, and and frankly, the fact that liberal women are particularly vicious yeah. uh, towards women who don't sort of follow along. Yeah. Um, leftist women think women can only think a certain way and any veering away from that. And especially when the, in the case of Anetta Ketchings, yeah. who not only is a woman who's a Republican, she is a black woman who's a Republican. So it's a double whammy, right? Because according to these white liberal women, black women are supposed to think a certain way. Yeah. And when you don't, they go bananas. And we keep hearing, we've been hearing it for over a year, that it's going to be white suburban women who decide this election. Right. And if that's the indication, let me just say, uh, if it goes Trump's way, these white suburban women that we're about to share with you are going to go absolutely insane. Oh. and the, If they aren't already. Uh, uh, and I and I know, I, and they did go insane the first time. Remember yes, all they the, did. The, I do the, remember the, the female cat hats that were worn. Yes. And Netta Ketchings posted this video, and she, she described it as uh, she quoted herself saying, "As a conservative woman, I could never vote for Kamala Harris because." And then she says, "What happened next was three separate attacks from this stranger. Her friend had to hold her back. I was called uneducated as she proceeded to give me her resume." Uh, apparently, they were having a conversation at the table, and this woman overheard her say that she couldn't vote for Kamala Harris, and then she decided to intrude on the conversation, and it sounded like this. So, do, I, do I disagree? Are you a Democrat? Yes, I am. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, 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 I'm I'm a, so I work for Democrats. So I'm a Democrat. 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 So I'm
there is a visual aspect to this. This woman actually got up Mm -hmm. and leaned over into Annetta's face in a very, I mean, I, the, she wanted Annetta to hit her or push her away. The rage in her the face. The rage in her face. And, the but again, bulging necks. The, Everything Biden said about Charlottesville but I mean, is manifested this, was this woman. This very nearly, it, uh, it could have been an assault if she had touched Annetta because she was so aggressive. And again, leaning over into Annetta's face right. um, to scream at her was really, I mean, so it, there is a visual part of this. It's hard to hard to there, there's two, understand. There's two things that stick out to me about this. The first is if you're not voting the way I think you should you're vote stupid. or the way I'm voting, you are uneducated, you're not you're an stupid. expert. Yep. You're not. Number two, every single societal norm can be violated. Yes, exactly. If you are on the wrong That's side exactly of this right. issue. Yes. I can berate you. I can scream at you. I can cause a scene in a restaurant. I can get in your face. I can kind of physically threaten you with the body language. It's it's okay because you support Trump. Right. And you just think about the how if <laughs> this white woman, it, it, the idea of her screaming at a black woman is something she would advise against about, under yeah. all normal circumstances. What if the conversation was about criminal justice reform? Right. What right. if what if Annette right. could, what if she supported Black Lives Matter right. and and this and, was the the mother of a police officer yes, who took issue. You can imagine this woman would be like, "Do not right. this is her lived experience. This is her truth. Right. How dare you yell at this African American woman?" But but I, it was all okay. You're right because yeah. Annetta was engaged in wrong things. All bets are off. That's yes. right. And all societal norms go out of the window. You've got to get into the Nazis' faces that's and punch right. them that's if right. necessary. That's right. This is where we are right now. That's where we Certainly are. Certainly this is where we're headed, depending on the results of this election, I, I fear. By the way, this happened, I think this hits Saturday, midday Saturday, I want to say. Yes. Seven million views already <laughs> on this video <laughs> because this, this touched a, a nerve with so many. And I want you to know... Uh, our friend Rob O'Donnell, uh, New York police officer yeah, and radio Rob's host, great. he was he's, was in Annapolis because his daughter is at the academy. They had an event over the weekend. He was staying at my house. We're watching this Saturday while we're watching college football, and we're scrolling, of course, while we're – and this video pops up, and he says, hey, you seen this? And I looked at it. I said, I have seen it, and I guarantee you Julie Gunlock knows everyone in that video. <laughs> Well, I, I knew Annetta, and she is the star of that video. And the minute I saw it, I thought, oh, this white woman just messed with the wrong Alexandrian. Because Annetta ran for mayor in Alexandria. She's a flight attendant. She right? is a flight attendant. Yeah. And she um, and, and it's funny. She's actually traveling right now. And I to- and we're going to be interviewing yeah. her later. And I told her I was going to tell everyone you fled this. You had to flee the country. <laughs> Um, but that is not actually not true. She's exactly actually accurate. working. She's got a, a yeah another gig. But, but this this woman kept going, and she. But we're only playing, we've only played you part of it so far. She kept showing her credentials. She kept talking yes. about her resume. She kept talking about which is such a DC this is, region. This is thing. another part of it that I think speaks uh, volumes about where we are right now. The only people who ever You heard, I don't care who the bleep you are. And her friend at the table, Annetta's friend, says, oh, you're so smart. You're so smart. But that is the thing where it's this 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 is the problem that we have with the the expert class credentialed crap here in this town, which is your your opinion on this issue is invalid and worthy of rage and mockery because you didn't take the same classes that I took at American University or at GW, which is the opposite of what this country has always stood for and always been about. There's more of this. In fact, the waiter had to come over and try to do Imagine being a restaurant owner when this is going down in your restaurant. We'll get to that part of it in a moment. It's 6.15, though. It's WMAL. You heard the other, there was another one saying, stop, stop, stop. That's her friend who's trying to pull her back right. and try to restrain this woman. Right. Because right. she looked like she was going to flip the table, like it's yes. Real Housewives of New Jersey or something. Um, and this this idea, it, I, I can't tell you how removed from the American experience this is, or at least should be. The, you know, 
the Constitution was written in such a way that farmers could understand That's right. it. That's that, right. That major decisions about who would represent us, who would sit in the White House, and who would be in the House of Representatives in the, well, at the time the Senate was determined by the state legislatures, but what we the people could make these determinations, not because of our credentials, not because of our education, but it was all simple enough that we were all, you know, the American people's opinion is to be trusted. And this, this 35-year-old, 35-year expert, and the the diminishment of Anita Cutchings because she has the wrong opinion right. is permeates our conversations right now in this country. It reveals a really important thing about where we are in America today is that we have a problem with classism and elitism mm-hmm. in this country, mm-hmm. not racism. Yeah, We have a whole group of people who think we're smarter and only smart people should be the ones making the decisions. And that is representative government. I get it. We elect people to go to D.C., but we ultimately vote for those people. We are ultimately the voters. The everyman right. is in charge of that. And that's what they've, they've, they've forgotten. I get that we have representative government, but don't forget it is the common man who puts those people in office. That lady in pink forgot that. Yeah. Annetta reminded us all of that. A little bit more here now as the restaurant worker tries to defuse the situation and move the people, you know, separate them basically because yeah. their tables are right next to each other. Yeah. Stop, 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 stop. I do love the waiter has to say, you know what, everyone's this entitled actually, to believe whatever they really want to believe. I ta- I, I've yeah. spoken in Annette a little bit about this, but um, I, that was a patron. Uh, oh. The manager comes over later oh, okay. and then reseats the crazy lady as if crazy lady needs protection, not Annetta. And that's what Annetta got upset about. This was a patron who, by the way, was black. And Annetta at one point says, why are you talking to me? Because apparently he was looking at her. Why are you talking to me? This lady is the aggressor. She's mm-hmm. the one who stood up and got in my face for wrong thing. So Annetta was, this guy, again, maybe well-meaning, but she, he was definitely looking at her as the one who was she was the, the aggressor. Before she came over in my face, Am I serious? So no, 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 don't talk to me. Talk to her. You and I already know. You and I already know who who is the who is the the warrant. Yeah, you and I already know. So take your attention right over here. And then, um, then they do get moved, and the woman just couldn't. She couldn't end it. She had to keep getting in her face back. and yelling at her. Denial. <laughs> Denial. Watch out, lady. It's gonna, you're trying me. Um, you're trying me. Anetta. No, Why are you keep looking at me when when she's the one agitating it? No. All right. Yeah. So and Anetta Catchings, that woman right there, is going to be joining us at eight thirty-five to talk about this encounter. But I do. We play this for you not only because it happened right in our backyard, but it has made international news. It's getting written up in Europe. I mean, this is a major deal. Yeah. And it's also a snapshot of where we are right now because, yes, we've made it to Election Day. It's tomorrow. This is going to resolve one way or the other. But but that's not resolved. No matter no. what the results are, no. this is where we are, Julie. We have uh, we have those doorbell cameras of people of these crazy – and it's – Always, it's always middle-aged white, white women. It's, or older <laughs> white women going up and harassing people for having Trump signs. And I have been har- personally harassed in Alexandria, Virginia. I cannot tell you. And again, I always go back to this. It was the most abuse I've ever gotten because now we don't put signs in our yard was when I put a Romney <laughs> sign in my yard. Yeah, I put a Romney sign in my yard and was called the most vile words in front of my child. driver. We live on a busy street. Drivers would slow down to yell things outside their car door. So, Where you know, for all, those, so for all those people who are going to react to this and say, well, this 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 became this way because yes, Trump, of Trump. Trump, Trump did it. it. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I got this kind of abuse when I put a Romney sign in my yard, who now the left considers a, 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 a darling, an angel, right. the right. savior, right, along with Lynn Cheney. So, uh, Liz Cheney. Oh, Liz gosh. Lynn's, Lynn's you can, you can okay, tell I'm a Gen Xer there. Yeah. But anyway, the, the point is, is that this didn't start with Trump. The left has been insane for decades. And now we have these videos to show it. We do. But I'm hoping the social media and frankly, is, uh, so I'm a big fan of public shaming. And I, <laughs> I really do. Me too. I think, you know, this whole, oh, don't, don't we it, shouldn't shame people. We should. No, no actually, no, people should to, yes. be shamed. Embarrassment. For public behavior like this. That's, civility. that's a good yes. thing. Yes. And I think that the fact that we have citizen journalism, the fact that yeah. we have social media, the fact that we can shine a light on this and about how people are behaving, 
I'm hoping that this will actually, I hope people see themselves in this saying, oh my gosh, I never want to be that guy. Yeah. I never not want to be that woman. I don't want to be in this position. Maybe I should look in the mirror. Maybe I should reflect. And, and I'm hoping, listen, we'll talk about our election predictions probably later today or tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping that a decisive victory <laughs> might send a message that we've had enough of this kind of thing. I really am. And well, we can only hope. It's 623. Now on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. Good morning. It's 637. We appreciate you letting us be a part of your morning routine. We promise you a news and entertainment extravaganza that certainly will not be routine. Starting at 705 with Joe DeGeneva. At 735, Trevor Maddich will talk about your commander's commanding dominance over the NFC East now. At 8.05, Sean Spicer will give us his last electoral analysis here on Election Eve. And then 8.35, uh, the woman of the hour, Anetta Ketchings, who we just focused on in that viral video out of Alexandria. Uh, we will discuss with her and you, Julie Gunlock. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, while we're focused on the righteous black female conservative who will save this country, let's bring in our favorite in that category, <laughs> Patrice Anwuka, of course, our colleague here. <laughs> WMAL and uh, Apuba over there at Independent Women's Forum. Patrice, good morning. Thanks for joining us on a Monye. <laughs> it is not a Monye, but good morning, Larry and Julie. Happy there's to be on. There's no yay about a Mon. Um, you've got a great article here focusing specifically on the black female vote because we're told that Kamala Harris just has that cornered. And demographically, she might, but there's a growing voice amongst uh, black women who are starting to look another direction. I think that you personify them. Tell us your thesis in this article. Absolutely. So I suspect that uh, black women will break for Kamala ha- for Donald Trump in a greater percentage than they have um, in the past. And um, now. Don't expect a majority of black women to vote for President Trump, but I do think we're going to see double digit um, support for President Trump among black women. I mean, when we look back over the past few few votes here, uh, Hillary Clinton won them by 94 mm. percent. Um, Donald Trump only won them by four percent in 2016. But he upped that to about nine uh, percent in 2020. And right now he's polling at 14 percent. So more than double where he was um where he was back in 2016. And and I, I, I suspect that it is about a lot of issues. The economy, yes, but also a lot of social issues that turn off black women who tend to be conservative when it comes to social policies, particularly around gender ideology and that being taught in schools. Also school choice and the idea that your, your kids should not be forced to stay in a failing school, but should actually have other opportunities. So so that's where I'm going to be looking on election night to see how many black women leave the uh, the plantation, as people often mm. make that analogy, and move over into the Donald Trump category or at least the independent category. Patrice, you, you list some of the reasons why black women should really mm-hmm. pause before casting a vote for Harris. You talk about how she was a former prosecutor who enforced truancy mm-hmm. laws, and that hurt disproportionately black parents more than white parents. You talk about how she locked up a single mother whose 11-year-old daughter missed school for hospitalizations due to a, a really painful disease. You talk yeah. about her record of incarcerating black men in particular. Mm-hmm. Did the Trump administration and, and, and those on behalf of the Trump administration do a good enough job, in your opinion, of conveying that record to black voters? I would like to have seen them do more on it, um, but I think they did they, they did pretty well in talking about the First Step Act, for example, which was passed by President Trump. That reduced the, the number of, of people who were incarcerated for minor drug offenses, um, and it significantly helped black men. So, you're, so, you're, so I, I know the Biden administration likes mm-hmm. to take credit, but it was really under President Trump that we saw First Step. And I think we could have seen policing reform uh, you know, between President Trump and Senator Tim Scott if the Democrats were willing to actually see some policing reform that police would agree with. Right. Um, when it comes to the school choice, I would love to see more about mm-hmm. that. Put more black moms out there. They are the face of the school choice movement yeah. mm-hmm. because so many of them are stuck in failing public school systems and they want choices. They want to be able to take their tax dollars and go to another option that better suits their kids rather than being forced by the unions to stay in these failing schools and watch their children languish. 
We're speaking with Patrice Anwuka. You recognize her voice, though, of course. And you can get this <laughs> column at Real Clear Politics. What I find interesting, if your thesis holds true, and listen, the numbers are astounding. Four percent of black women voted for Trump in 2016. He nearly uh, or he did double that to nine percent in 2020. And now he's uh, up another 50 percent, it appears, based on the polls to 14 percent uh, or maybe even more when all is said and done, because yeah. Trump always underperforms in polls. What I find fascinating about that, if that trend continues, is that he yeah. did this based on issues, not based on pandering, not based on identity politics, not putting mm-hmm. somebody out there and sort of, as we see from Kamala, Kamala Harris changes her accent depending on who she's talking yeah. to, right? And sort <laughs> yeah. of pandering about that. Donald Trump is who he is. He's not going to change who he is, but he's been talking about issues. It's Everyone says, oh, he's a showman. He's an entertainer. He's a, this has been one of the most issue-oriented yeah. campaigns I have seen from Donald Trump. Well, and he has put Kamala Harris on her heels. Remember the ta- cutting taxes on tips. Yeah. Cutting taxes on overtime, yeah. cutting taxes on Social Security. He put those policies out, and then a week later, she's she's she copy and pasted it and put it into her platform. You know, I, I think to the point about issues, we really see this trend in Black women among younger generations. So the under forty four crowd. Mm. These are millennials, and these are Gen Zers, and they are more open to listen to Donald Trump or to listen to other uh, policy third third candidate third party candidates because they recognize that their parents. Their allegiance to the Democratic Party has delivered nothing. Um, you know, a, a I, few I, gatekeepers get Patrice, stronger, but the rest of the black community is suffering. I'm so still. sorry to do this to you. You know how on <laughs> WMAL here, especially O'Connor and Company, we we you know we get feedback from our listeners, and we've got Patty from Alexandria who wants to take issue with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, I mean, Julie, she's a 35-year national yeah. security expert, Patty, uh, uh, in Alexandria. Uh, 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 honestly, Patrice, what was your reaction when you saw that viral video? <laughs> Oh, it, it, what is a, is that just another day in Alexandria? I mean, come on now. You guys are calling her a patty. She is a classic Karen. She's like a liberal Karen, um, you know, and she's in a high-ranking position. She's scared that her job will be lost, that, that the swamp will be drained this time around. That's what this is really about. They're losing their minds because they're scared that, yes, we will, that President Trump could resize the federal government and get rid of all the waste and the, the people who are doing absolutely nothing but advancing their own ridiculous radical agenda Amen. yeah let's get rid of the carries and the patties i'm all for it <laughs> patrice on uh what a year this has been on this election eve I now know. as we wrap oh. up and it's so great that you've been by our side this whole time and we'll talk to you on friday let's uh, hope for a happy two yay yeah, yeah and yeah. And, really and let's hope by the and time a wonderful we, wednesday and by yeah. the time patrice is joining us on friday let's hope we actually know who won <laughs> The election. Wouldn't that be great? Exactly. Thanks, exactly. Patrice. Thanks, Patrice. Thanks, right, Patrice. Thanks, guys. It's 644. Breaking news and the inside story. News Talk 105.9 WMAL. Making sense of the news. You know, uh, Pennsylvania and Michigan are two of these blue wall states that Kamala Harris has to win, right? Yeah. And strategically, it's kind of tough because Pennsylvania, think about Pennsylvania and who they've elected statewide. They've elected Josh Shapiro, who is a pro Israel. Jewish Democrat. That's why he didn't get picked as the running mate, by the way, That's because right. he's just way too Jewish. Yep. You know, they can't have that in today's Democrat Party. But then also, who's their newly elected senator, John Fetterman, as Ugh. wacky as he is, he has been absolutely stalwart in his support and defense of the state of Israel. Yep. Which tells you that the population of the people in Pennsylvania, they are pro Israel, yes, right? They are. Yes. There's no, so if you're in Pennsylvania, you know, they're targeting you with so many ads right now. Mm-hmm. And on social media, they can target your ads based on your zip code. Yep. So if you live in Pennsylvania, this is the kind of ad you'll get for Kamala Harris. Let me be clear. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself. Mm. And I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself because the people of Israel must never again face the horror that a terrorist organization called Hamas caused on October 7. Now, and it goes on, and it's very explicit about what Hamas did to those innocent mm-hmm. people on October 7th, mm-hmm. right? So that's great for Pennsylvania. Obviously, big message for her. Job well done. But in Michigan, which has the largest Arab-American, Muslim-American population in the Midwest, if not in the country, you know, what is... 
what is Mark Levin called Dearborn? Dear, Dearbornistan, I think he calls it, right? I mean, it, this is this is a state that has elected Rashida Tlaib to represent That's them right. in Congress. Yeah. You can't play that. What are you going to do in Michigan? Well, mm. Andrew Kaczynski, who does a lot of sort of deep dive investigative work for CNN, and he's a mixed bag. Sometimes he... He's been great lately. Lately boy, he has. But, oh, there's been... Yeah. In fact, his roots... Uh, Quick inside secret, before Andrew died, we were about to hire Andrew Kaczynski. You're kidding. It was before, it was, he went, he ended up getting hired by BuzzFeed at the and time. And he worked with Darcy. Uh, Oliver Darcy Oliver at CNN. Darcy, well, he still does work. Was at, also oh, at The Blaze. Yeah, Oliver yes. Darcy used to be at The Blaze. Absolutely. Oh, we, he was uh, So he, he was very good at finding videos that, you know, were in the conservative realm. Anyway. He found and discovered that that is the ad that Kamala Harris is running in Pennsylvania. But here's the ad she's running in Michigan. What has happened in Gaza over the past nine months is devastating. We cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering. And I will not be silent. Our (laughs) common humanity compels us to act. So (laughs) basically, Kamala Harris will say whatever she has to to whatever audience she has to, to get votes and get power. It, whether it's Hamas is evil and we stand with Israel so when gross. you're in Pennsylvania or at the very same time talking and lamenting about the toll in Gaza. And the truth is, is that uh, thanks to Andrew Kaczynski, we have this. Like He sort of revealed this, but she counts on a media who stays silent of course. on this type of cynical double message coming out of her campaign and her mouth. Um, usually the media does does stay silent, and thank goodness that someone yeah. broke that mold and decided not to stay silent. But if for the people of Michigan and for the people of Pennsylvania who care about this issue, and for the rest of us, no matter where you live, we are faced with the same question, and that is, which Kamala Harris will you get yeah. if she wins? It's six fifty-two.